Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to PMMP2543 material section. So this is uh, our fourth lecture session. Uh, we talk about the basic sub material selection, continuing the design process which we uh, left off since uh, last week. Okay, so previous lecture I talked about uh, creating a translation table on how you need to transfer uh, or interpret, translate information you got uh, or you acquired from, uh, let's say for example, a, a design engineer or requirement coming from the customer, uh, getting uh, market surveys and everything, and how you translate those information to uh, specification uh, requirements for your design that you uh, be used later on to uh, decide on your uh, coming to your what materials you want to use or what process they'll be using. Uh, they'll be choosing. Okay, uh, so uh, we already covered that those, uh, especially relating to the design requirements. What are the, the the parameters that you need, such as function, uh, the constraint, the objectives, and what are the free variables. Screening means that we eliminate candidates of process or material that we see or we when we apply it we know that we that the material or the process uh, to know that the, the material process cannot do the job or cannot perform according to our requirements okay this is important so, uh, so that we we want to only uh, left with the decision uh, decision of only the process or the material that we know can perform well or can meet the specification or requirement for the uh, for our uh, for the product okay as an example so requirement that can component mass function uh, in boiling water okay so we uh, if the, the the if the materials or of, uh, of the process cannot meet the requirement then we can limit it okay we can remove it from the uh, from our choice uh, if so if we want to say the material must uh, must uh, function in boiling water then we know that its temperature uh, it must have a, a, an operating temperature more than 100 degrees centigrade okay or if a component uh, we want to be transparent so then we know that it must has a certain level of uh, transparency a certain level of optical quality so all these requirements uh, then we we define it as attribute limits okay we define it as the, the limits that set the attributes that we want for the product or materials that we uh, uh, the process that we want uh, and this selection requires uh, an unbiased meaning that we we start off from the all the materials or all the process that are available okay that we know of and then we uh, when we start off from all the information available then we narrow it down using this uh, constraint or we call it as attribute limits and screening we have, we also can be defined as gates meaning that if we know that you meet the constraint then only you'll pass or then only you move to the second stage if you if you don't meet the requirement if you don't meet the constraints if you don't meet if you don't go pass through this gate meaning that the process of the material would not be considered at all next is ranking now ranking is that we once we filtered the materials or the process that we know that uh, does cannot do the, the uh, does not meet the constraint, does not meet the limit, or does not meet the, the job that we we wanted to. So then we after that we left with what are the materials that that uh, that has been that we know that can perform, and from there how do we choose which one is uh, we want to be, uh, that is uh, I mean that we say that every that uh, all of this material for example let's say if we rank if we have we have left with uh, for example uh, uh, a, a group of metals a group of a group of polymers and a group of uh, ceramics all of this we say that okay all of this material can meet the the, the requirement but which one is more uh, preferable between the other okay which one is more uh, we know that it's much better in terms of uh, what we want it to be as opposed to which one is as as in the lower uh, ranks M meaning to say that uh, in other words that we want to rank the best coming to the worst or we can also be uh, rank it between uh, coming from the worst to the best okay and this is what we call it as the criterion of material indices meaning that we index the materials or the process according to its uh, 
the from the highest ranking to the lowest ranking the lowest rank or from the lowest rank to the highest rank so what are the difference between screening and rank, ranking so in simple terms we say that we isolate we uh, filter for screening we filter the materials or process that we know that not capable of doing the job we only want the materials that are that can do or perform the job or perform uh, or meet the requirements and ranking from from those materials that are left with us so we rank them from the best uh, to the worst or from the worst to the best so those are the two differences one is to filter uh, materials that we, we we know that cannot do that we know that we, we uh, that cannot meet the requirement the next is from what are the materials that left or the process that left so then we rank them for the two which one uh, which are uh, that can do the job best or can they meet the requirements uh, the, uh, as as best as it can and finally after we've uh, translate uh, translation we've done with uh, a screening and then we've done with uh, ranking okay choosing ranking the best of the materials that we have finally is documentation so in short is that we, once we have this rank uh, materials or rank process that we have the candidates that we have that meet the constraint that meet the requirement of maximizing or minimizing the, the material indices then how do we choose the final do we always choose the top rank Okay. For example, if we choose, uh, we say that uh, if we if the, the criterion of or the material indices in is the uh, at lowest cost, do we always choose the material with the high, the lowest cost, or if the material indices indices uh, shows that we want to uh, minimize uh, mass, do we always choose the material with the lowest mass? Okay. So the answer is depending on. Uh, the, the, it's not it's not as simple uh, it's not as simple as black and white there is sometimes some consideration that we have to consider and that's why the documentation process come, comes in meaning that let's say for example if you have a uh, at the same uh, rank of material you have one polymer uh, polypropylene and you have one another uh, metal for example uh, low carbon steel both these two let's say when we for example meet uh, if designed properly, the polymer also can meet a, 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 of uh, the load, for example, about uh, 10, new, 10 kilonewton, and the carbon steel also can meet 10 kilonewton. But when we come down to uh, and both also uh, pass the, the 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 constraints and everything, but which one would be uh, would we choose? If we say uh, we want to minimize mass, of course the polypropylene would have the lowest density uh, as compared to the carbon steel but in uh, in the application wise of the when we search for information does it really mean that of of all uh, of the of all situations uh, the polypropylene uh, is the best choice could be in a certain uh, case uh, in a certain uh, history that we find uh, it could be that uh, low carbon steel would be uh, the better the better choice so this is what we call finding finding information looking for uh, history best practices that that would finally help us with the final decision and oftentimes it's not just coming to the conclusion of just one material or just one process it has to be some sort of a sacrifice between one uh, attributes or one parameter that we have so those information, this documentation that we that we search, oftentimes it's not just only descriptive, uh, wordy. It can be something graphical, pictorial, uh, case studies of previous users, uh, uh, details of its uh, corrosion behavior, uh, on how it affects the environment, uh, its availability and pricing, uh, one of its environment impact. So it comes uh, comes down to, uh, comes back to. Uh, for example, what I talked about polypropylene and uh, low carbon steel. So even though that we say that okay, uh, the cost of the material of, for example, uh, polypre polypropylene is much lower as compared to uh, low carbon steel, and uh, polypropylene has a much lower density compared to uh, uh, low carbon steel. But if we if a process, if a, if the application concerns about, for example, uh, the effect on the environment. Okay, so 
could be that uh, the low carbon seed is much a better choice compared to the uh, polypropylene because polypropylene uh, even though it's easily recyclable we know that from uh, from uh, studies found that uh, it is not uh, uh, how many of the polypropylene is being is easier to uh, recycle or reuse and if it's being recycled it will be very detrimental to the uh, to the new product that's being used uh, with the recycled material as opposed to low carbon steel we still have some uh, leeway we can use uh, we still have some method even though we recycle we have some uh, we can do some uh, heat heat treatment process or some process to uh, increase its strength or increase its uh, mechanical properties and all this information we can find from handbooks uh, suppliers uh, data sheets uh, all uh, resources that we have from uh, even from a local library or even from websites or in the case of uh, recent uh, practice we can just google it and all this information that we have we have case studies journals so this information helps us with the coming to the final decision So, in, to summarize that all these steps are important. Firstly, we start with translating the information, next screening, and then ranking, and then final documentation. If we don't all, if we don't perform all these steps, we are still uh, the the candidates that we have this info, the pool of candidates that we can choose is very enormous. And uh, we've gone through a, a few lab session uh, with uh, using the. Uh, CS and the software and you know that from level 2 we start off with 100 materials and if you go to level 3 uh, more than a thousand materials that you are being uh, uh, being thrust upon the options of choosing uh, any kind of process any kind of requirements that you want so if we if we don't do any screening if we don't do any ranking and we don't uh, find documentations that to support our final decision decision it will be very overwhelming it will be time consuming it won't uh, it'll be even uh, coming to the final decision won't, won't be as easy as as, uh, as as we thought so all this uh, process is very important for us to identify and then to uh, finalize our decision making sure that we left with just a small number of candidates uh, of uh, materials or process so this all these steps are important to any kind of design process okay so i talked about uh, the, uh, translating again uh, screening ranking and also some documentation so i want to dive a little bit more a bit deeper on the process of ranking okay i give an example for uh, let's say you want to rank your family members uh, you have uh, let's say from uh, asking them to line up and then rank them from the tallest to the shortest okay so uh, yeah, of course uh, if you look at it on the surface you say that okay it's, it's really simple i'll just ask uh, all the people at the tallest on the left go uh, we'll start on the left and then comes down to uh, coming to the right will be the, the the shortest so if i if let's say for example if i draw uh, let's say you have for example you have someone in the family members about uh, five or six family members so we have will be someone from the tallest and then the second uh, uh, your second family member will be the second person and then coming down coming down and then you know what okay so often at first glance maybe it will be easier okay uh, to rank them according to their height but what if some some what if one of your family two of your family members okay have about the same height of course you can settle the dispute by measuring them uh, exactly okay so i say but at the at first glance when you see some uh, when you see these uh, two of your family members with, with the same height for example these two have just a difference of about one centimeter okay if you look uh, from a distance you won't have that you won't have that that that, that direct or that uh, that judgment of uh, that saying a direct judgment of saying that okay uh, my for example your brother I mean, uh, I mean your second brother and your your third sister 
when you look at them from from afar you won't you you won't, it won't be as easy as recognize them one is the tallest and one is the highest unless you uh, measure them physically okay so this is what material in this in this is uh, helps with the with the ranking meaning that you uh, I mean it's not easy as uh, it's not as simple as saying okay the the the, the material that is the, the the highest density and then we write them to the lowest density okay but at, oftentimes materials have uh, have been uh, uh, that are available in the market okay oftentimes they have this different uh, they have uh, the the properties or the properties of, of some could sometimes overlap with each other okay uh, they have sort of a range. It's not oftentimes the uh, the, the 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 value of their of their uh, density is often uh, absolute. It's always at the range because of uh, could be because of uh, we have it's been purposely uh, designed it that way, or it could be some uh, we put in some uh, additives or some uh, chemical improvement to to modify its properties so it's not always an absolute uh, value so this is uh, what material index comes in it helps with the, uh, uh, the with the ranking process so that it makes it uh, without any biases okay so that the all the, the the materials that we left from after screening okay we left when we rank it all the all the materials that left with us that that we know that can meet with our uh, constraints so all these uh, materials or process we write them according to equal opportunity which is using a, 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 a an equation so that we only write them without any bias okay we write them uh, according giving equal opportunity to all the materials and all the process that we want and we can uh, uh, characterize this uh, ranking process using we call it as a performance equation. The performance so the performance equation contains the in uh, the material properties or we call it as the material index. And this group of the uh, of this group of material index we call them as the material indices. So the performance equation in general is what defines the element or product of its requirements. Okay, for, in order for it to uh, achieve its intended objective or its intended function. Okay, so the performance equation can be defined as first their functional requirement F. Okay, F here doesn't mean necessarily mean it is a, a force. Okay, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that. Anything that defines the function of the uh, an equation that defines the function of its the, of the material or the product, we call it as the function requ uh, requirement. Next is the geometric parameters. I mean that anything that uh, uh, in short form as G. So anything that is defined as the geometric requirement, for example, the the, the length, uh, the uh, the area, or the 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 volume. Okay, we everything is falls under the geometric parameters the functional requirement could be uh, load for example that's uh, f force then but it doesn't necessarily it uh, limits to that it can be uh, the stress it can be it can also be the stiffness okay of the material so anything that defines the function uh, of the requirement is that falls under this uh, uh, falls under the equation uh, F equation and finally the material properties which M and this is what refer to we refer to as the material index so basically uh, the performance function is defined as the function of F the function requirement G the geometric parameters and finally M the material index so p is the 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 the, the combination of function f1 of the functional requirement function 2 of the geometric parameter and function 3 as of the material index so the p function can be in any form or requirement that you want uh, it can be the mass uh, it can be the requirement of the volume 
or it can be the requirement of cost. All these are, uh, that are, we can be uh, can be characterized as the uh, performance function. But the one uh, one part of the performance function that we are most concerned about is would be the material index. This is what we want to choose. Uh, uh, this is what the, 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 the function that we use to rank materials or process that we want. Okay, This is the, the materials uh, function or the material index that we more concerned on. So we, uh, so I'll be discussing on how we, uh, how we derive for, on, on one example, how do we get uh, the material index. And also the materials should meet all other constraints imposed by design. So when we maximize or minimizing a single property, we maximize the performance function. Okay. So often it's not uh, involving a one single property. Sometimes a group of properties that we are that are more relevant. Okay. So one example is that if you want a material, uh, the best material to have a light, stiff, uh, tight, uh, a rod or a tensile rod. Those are we we are more much uh, we are preferring materials that have a greatest value in the specific stiffness. Okay, where the value of uh, E uh, modulus yang over intensity. Okay, and the best material for us for springs, for example, is a, a materials that have the greatest value of the uh, stress at uh, failure square over its yang modulus. Okay, may, uh, and stress F is defined as the failure stress. So this is one example. Okay, uh, we have a cylindrical rod. Okay, with an area A, a square number, a square area A, and it is being uh, unit actually loaded, meaning that it is being uh, pulled at both ends with the force of F and this particular rod has a specific length L that it must meet. This is its, uh, the design has been set. It must have specific length L and at the same time it must not fail when with this applied load F. Okay, so this, those are the, the requirements. And so the design, uh, this example says that the design requires that the rod must be lightweight. Okay, it must have uh, a lower mass and is open to suggestion of materials okay so so from this this just this given uh, information how do we translate okay to a uh, to information that will be uh, easier for uh, technical uh, non technical even non technical person to understand okay with all this uh, jargon so all this uh, uh, wordy information so the first step is we make it by making a translation table. Okay, so we list down the function first, which is a rod, or we can write here as a tie rod or a tensile rod. Okay, we, uh, as long as uh, if you want to be as specific as possible, uh, it's bad, it'll be better. Okay, if you want it right in general, also uh, acceptable. But the 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 more specific it is, uh, the more specific it is, then the more uh, uh, it will be easier for the reader or easier to a non technical person to understand. Next, uh, we say it's constraint. It's already been specified that uh, the length must it, it must meet the specific length L, and also it must not fail when we apply a load F. And the objective, yes, the designer said that it wants to have a lightweight uh, material. So the mass, the lightweight of the uh, tie rod or tensile rod must be minimized. The M, uh, the mass M must be minimized. And it says that the designer is open to any kind of uh, to suggestion of uh, any kind of materials that can meet this requirement. So uh, the free variable would be the choice of materials. So what we'll start with, so we'll start with uh, after finishing the uh, the translation table. Next, we want to derive the uh, material index, or in other words, the perform. Uh, before coming to the material index itself, we have to start with the performance function. Okay, so we say that the requirement is for a lightweight cylindrical rod. We already know that. So because the, that is the objective, so we start with the objective, which is the mass 
of a rod okay is uh, a mass not just a mass of rod but mass of a matter even an object is the density times its volume okay so this is our start starting to get we have this is what we mean that we start with the performance function okay and we, if we open the, uh, if we change uh, volume transform it we know that uh, volume is equal to an area times its length then we'll get the uh, the volume okay so then our performance function becoming the density times area times l and we mark it as the first equation and we know that the applied tensile load must not exceed the material's uh, failure strength or its tensile strength and by definition we know that force over area is equal to stress okay so based on this criteria we know that we want that the force over area being applied to the rod must be lower than the force of the fail, uh, of uh, the, uh, the failure strength or the tensile strength and then we mark this as equation 2 so if we arrange equation 2 we also can get the uh, area must be larger or equals to the force applied over the tensile strength okay from the from the second equation and if we insert the second equation into the first equation we will get the value uh, the in the mass m must be larger or equal with force which is uh, force times length times stress over sigma or the tensile strength okay and we mark this as equation 3 so when we arrange in this uh, in this manner so we know that th this would be the we know that the the performance function that we get so we know that the f is the functional requirement which is the load and uh, that is being applied to and length is the geometric parameters where it has a specific length and rho over sigma f would be the material index or material properties m okay so this is the functional requirement geometric parameter and finally this is would be the material index okay so if we look closely at the performance function we see that if we define uh, already the force mean the force already been set and the length is already being specified so in order to get a lower spend function if i want to get a lower mass with the force being specified the length being specified so of course then we have to have this value as minimum as possible okay because all this already being fixed so in order to get a lower mass so this only this the material index can be changed so if this value is as low as possible then we will get correspondingly the mass would be as uh, low as possible so since we already identified the material index okay uh, as i said we, uh, in order to fill requirement so this value uh, of the material index must be as minimum as possible then only we can get the the lowest mass but in practice it is much more preferable to say something that we want to have its maximum value okay we don't often times here uh, from if some of you have uh, working experience we don't often times say I want, let's say for example uh, design, uh, car designer okay we say that okay uh, in order to make this car uh, as uh, with the best fuel economy so we must get its uh, the, the lowest uh, mass as it can okay but oftentimes still designers engineers will say we must maximize the weight why because they know that in practice a car is not just one uh, component uh, of, of one, uh, just one component weight but the effect of uh, different materials different parts different components the the, the chassis comes from uh, uh, aluminum or a low uh, low uh, low mass uh, steel and the engine
engine is from cast iron the uh, the the seats are polymer or leather okay natural materials the uh, the interior mainly from polymer so we they understand that they don't just simply say that we want to uh, getting the the lowest uh, mass of the car uh, to the lowest the minimum as possible but they often say we want to maximize so that uh, because of different uh, criteria different uh, function of different components being made of different materials they often say they want to maximize the the, the, the to maximize the efficiency they're also maximizing the 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 weight and the space of the uh, of the vehicle of the car so so uh, in practice that we don't say that we want to minimize the material index okay making it lower but we want to maximize it so when we max it when we say that maximizing we just inverting from this originally the equation the material index would be the rho the density over the tensile strength so we just invert it and we come with the uh, tensile strength over the density and this is finally the material index that we use in the in our uh, in our further uh, process of uh, deciding the material that we want okay that we will use that we'll be applying in the in the uh, cs edipack software So this is just an example I'm, gi I'm giving you, okay, an example of uh, what would be uh, normally the function, okay, with the objective and constraints, uh, and what would be the index uh, finally that we get, okay. So for example, uh, when we say that we want a tie, uh, a cylindrical uh, rod with a minimum weight as the objective, and having a, a constraint with this stiffness uh, being uh, decided or specified then the index of it would be the Young's modulus over the density if for say a column okay with minimum cost and uh, the load uh, uh, a column meaning for example in construction with its uh, the buckling load already prescribed then the the material index would be the square root of the Young's modulus over the Material cost Cn and times its uh, density. Okay, so uh, this is just th this examples. Okay, is that uh, you also need to derive the material index. It's not simply as just memorizing. Okay, uh, having when when we say that okay, this is the, the requirement that that you have the function objective and constraint, and then you just straight away use this index. That is actually a process, as I've shown you pre, uh, just now. Okay, starting from the, uh, the equation of mass, uh, uh, the density times volume, and volume we expand it for, with from with uh, uh, area times length, and then we, uh, the force over area is equal to the uh, stress tensile strength, and then we substitute uh, area with the original equation. Then we come up with the, the performance equation, mass with uh, uh, force length and its uh, material index so getting this index is not just simply as just knowing uh, this uh, knowing the, the function objective and constraint and then you straight away we can uh, I mean use or uh, assume this would be the material index there is a, 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 a derivation that you need to use okay and you also in the in the coming uh, in, in you gone through you will be going through the the lab sheet eh? and how you uh, getting uh, how you can acquire or how you come in the end of getting the material index it's not just simply as uh, plucking uh, the based on the information that you have we just straight away use there is some uh, mathematical uh, equation that is that is that you need to derive that comes to the final conclusion of the material index okay so this is really important because uh, in our in this subject particularly I really emphasize on using the, the mathematical function. Okay, deriving the material index is not just is simply using it. You have to understand how do you come to that conclusion. Okay, you, you can't simply just uh, deciding based on just uh, this information. You already decide what the material index will be. You have to derive the material index 
uh, and uh, because uh, then only you can appreciate how the how the material index come to be okay and this this derivation uh, process will be asked you will be asked in uh, how you to derive the equation and then you will need to know the to understand the step by step process okay this is really really important i have to really emphasize to you so you can't uh, simply uh, and you be you have a, you, you will be uh, i'll be sharing the, these practices with our tutorial and lab sheet and our uh, lab session and you have we have practice and you 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 will uh, then you will understand and how to derive the material index how to get the performance equation leading to the material index <clears throat> so uh, to summarize okay the material index is made uh, uh, defined as the, how we measure uh, a candidate that has passed the screening uh, that we that, that that has passed the, the constraint that we apply to it mean that it can meet the objective okay this is what uh, it it really uh, it really means okay that the material index purpose is for uh, trying to rank uh, uh, possible candidates that can meet uh, the the performance equation and then ranking it to according to uh, the best to the uh, worst candidate okay and the material oftentimes associated with we maximizing us, uh, some aspect of performance as i said uh, just now uh, even though we we know that for uh, uh, the, the example just now we want to minimize mass but we in practice we don't say minimize the particular index we want to we want to maximize it and how do we maximize it by inverting the the performance uh, the material index to get the uh, to uh, to to achieve the maximum uh, 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 the, the the maximizing the material index okay or uh, maximizing the our 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 rank okay so we don't uh, we don't in practice say that we want to minimize but we often time uh, in practice we often say the maximizing the the performance or the material index of the of the equation okay so uh, and how do we do it by uh, inverting the material index so thank you very much for uh, your attention uh, for uh, watching this uh, video today so if you have any other questions or uh, any uh, inquiries that you uh, inquiries that you uh, so some parts you don't understand you can comment in the in, in the video or you can we can use uh, our microsoft teams okay to comment or you can text me okay and so uh, we'll uh, in the next le lecture i'll be uh, sharing with you on the material property charts how do we use the material index so thank you for, very much and have a good day